Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight I'm here to do a quick little review and do a little skincare chats. I had a couple things to talk about, but I wanted to review this Obagi Professional C Microdermabrasion Polish and Mask. I just got this from Derm Store, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, guys, we are back in my bathroom. It's been quite a while since I've done a video in here. I usually like to sit at my desk because that's where my ring light is. And I just kind of have it set up now where it's really easy for me to just sit down and film, which is really nice. But this mask, I think, is a little more messy than other ones that I've used as of lately. So I need some water and I need to not make a mess everywhere. So we're back in my bathroom. Um, no fancy ring light in here tonight. I just left all that, um, you know, to the side. It's really not that serious. So I am going to just put my hair up, tell you guys about this mask. This mask is pretty pricey, but it is one that I've had my eye on for a while. And I'm really happy that I finally have it so I can tell you guys. Is it worth the money or is it not? I do wanna give you guys a couple of options to save some money on this mask as well. This video is not sponsored. I've always shopped for skincare on Derm Store. They have a lot of really amazing brands. And um, so this mask is, like I said, it's the Obagi Professional C Microdermabrasion Polish and Mask. It comes in this 2.8 ounce jar. It is $83. If you were just go to if you were going to just go to Derm store and buy it full price, no code, no nothing, it is $83, which I think is a lot for a mask. Now, you know, if you're buying like a retinol or something like a glycolic acid product, I think that those warrant the price tag. But I will say I think that vitamin C also has a very huge role to play at least in my skincare routine so i wanted to tell you guys you can do their subscribe and save on derm store and that will save you some money it saves you 15 percent, and the price goes down to 70 dollars instead of 83 you could always just subscribe and then if you don't like it or you don't think that you're going to want to repurchase it then just cancel your subscription you just have to remember to cancel your subscription the other option is that if you've never bought on Derm Store, then you can always put in your email and they will send you a coupon code. I believe that's for 15%, it might be for 10. So those are just a couple of options. This is also available from other vendors online, but just be cautious if you are trying to save money on this and going with a different uh, vendor, just make sure that it's a reputable vendor who is not gonna sell you something that's outdated or fake. You know, that would be the worst case scenario, especially when it comes to something that you're putting on your skin. And vitamin C is also something that you don't want sitting on a shelf for a really long time. You wanna make sure that the product is fresh and new, and I completely trust Derm Store. So this is something that I've had my eyes on for a while now, probably since early in the summer. I just never pulled the trigger. I had other products that I wanted to work through, but I felt like it was a good time to go ahead and treat myself. This has 78 reviews and it's five stars on Derm Store. So the reviews that are not five stars, I will say, it's usually people compa complaining that it made them irritated or dry or sensitive after using it. And when it comes to a potent vitamin C, this is 30% that is pretty potent. So I would say if you have never used vitamin C and you don't usually exfoliate normally in your skincare routine, you should be, but I wouldn't just go in with this if you're someone who doesn't exfoliate and has never used a potent vitamin C. So those are sort of two disclaimers, but most people really really love this um, product and I got it because it is so potent and I have used vitamin C for a while pretty long term if I was going to pick 
three key ingredients to put into my skincare routine on a permanent basis, it would go in this order. Retinol, vitamin C, glycolic acid. Those three are really powerhouse ingredients and I've had amazing results, whether it comes from helping my acne scarring or just overall clarity and brightness, tone, you know, fine lines. Like I do still have my little 11 lines, but those aren't gonna go away unless I do a Botox, which I'm not doing right now. But aside from that, you know, I do still need to work on my acne scars, but overall I'm pretty happy with my skin's tone aside from the acne scars. So anyway, that was a lot of blabbering, but I wanted to read a little bit about this mask and then I will apply it and talk to you guys for a couple of minutes while it sits. It does need to sit for 10 to 15 minutes. So it says Obagi's uh, microdermabrasion polish mask minimizes the appearance of fine lines, hyperpigmentation, and sun damage to boost a youthful glow. This exfoliating formula first, first sloughs off skin, dead skin to refine skin texture, then leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes as it infuses skin with botanical oils and vitamin C. This two-in-one polish and mask leaves lackluster complexions with a soft and brighter finish. So it says to scrub a thin, even layer onto damp skin, avoiding the eye area, leave on for 10 to 15 minutes. You may experience a slight tingling sensation, wipe off and rinse with warm water. You can use it two to three times a week. So I'm really excited to try this. Um, the reviews that are positive on Derm Store are like, you know, you would swear this is the best product that anyone has ever come out with. So I'm very, I'm a little on the fence. I don't know what to expect, but that's why I wanted to try it for you guys. I am not someone who takes spending $83 or even $70 on a skincare product lightly. I think that you guys know that by now. And I also don't flood my channel with reviews, but if there's something interesting enough for me to be on the fence about, I think that it'd be helpful for you guys to see a review. But as always, I don't ever want you guys to feel pressured into buying something or like you have to buy something. If I like this, then take a screenshot of it and save it for your Christmas list or you know a birthday present idea for yourself or something like that. I just want to reiterate that you know, a beauty budget is something that I do take very seriously and that's why I, you know, make it a point to not consistently talk about products and you have to get this and this is amazing and this is my favorite and all of that kind of stuff. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully it resonates with you guys. I hope it does. So uh, let's see. So I'm going to roll up my little sleeves. And I did wash my face before I started this video. I mean, I'm a little oily, but that's just how the cookie crumbles around here. So I'm going to dampen my face and then we'll get started. So the mask did come with this little doodad, this little scoopy thing. And then it is sealed like this. Save that for later. And it looks like it's a paste. I did take a little bit out earlier, but I didn't really get to dig into it. So I'm going to take about that much to work this around. Yeah, I wouldn't put this on completely dry skin. Follow the directions because it is pretty thick. Okay, and then I took this much, and this will be for my cheeks. All right, so I have a nice thin layer on. I have a little bit of pink forming on my cheeks. It's also on my forehead. It's probably just from actually, you know, scrubbing it a little bit. So we will leave this on. When I rinsed it off, I wanted to tell you guys that I did, it almost feels like you can feel the oils in the mask. You can definitely feel them because when you rinse it off, your the water almost beads up on your hands. So I can see why they tell you to use warm water. You should probably use warm water anyway, but I can see why they mentioned that. 
See, the spots that I am concerned with are like right over here. I have like two, two or three little spots that were old acne scars. And the problem is with a lot of my acne scars, they have healed to be like pink or, you know, like a brown consistency. Um, I've always had issues with scarring from acne. It's just what I've always dealt with. It would be nice to have a product that could help brighten up that area. You know, I do use a fair amount of vitamin C, but something a little more potent and something that is going to physically exfoliate would be nice to have in my routine. That's that. We're going to let this sit for a few minutes. And um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys I had this thought the other day, and I don't know if it'll be interesting or stupid, but I'm going to tell you guys anyway. <laughs> so I had this thought of villains on YouTube and building your following based off of being controversial and maybe being quote unquote hated. I think that's a really strong word, but I'm using it just as reference. I think that this is a really interesting concept and I do think that there have been a couple of YouTube creators who this has worked for and you know you look at Jeffree Star where he has so many people that dislike him and he's mega famous and has been canceled how many times and is still here you know um, so I think that's a really interesting concept and I've said in other videos, I think that we are at a point in YouTube where people are tired of the entitled YouTuber, the bratty YouTuber, the villain YouTuber, the mean girl YouTuber, the mean guy YouTuber. I just don't think that that's going to work for anyone in the future and it could and I might be totally wrong. But I think that we're at this really interesting place in YouTube where, you know, I think a lot of people are just tired of seeing assholes find success, you know, and there's been so many who have done horrible things and they delete the tweets, they delete the videos, and it's just like, poof, it's gone. I don't know what you guys are talking about. And when the subscribers try to Hold the creator you know accountable then it's you guys are attacking me or I don't know what you're talking about or you know whatever and I just think that we're at a point where people are getting really sick and tired of that gig and you know for me on my own channel I'm not gonna sit up here and be like I'm the sweetest youtuber ever I'm sweet as candy because I'm not but I think that as a creator, you have to find that happy medium where you're going to stand your ground for things that you feel strongly about or things that you know you're right about. But you also need to be very relatable and very approachable when your subscribers come to you with either a question or a controversial comment or something that they might want to know more about. You know, you kind of have to, when you're putting yourself on this public platform, I've heard this sentiment of, well, you know, I need my privacy. And I totally agree with that 100%. But you also have to be open somewhat to answering questions and, you know, dealing with issues head on when they do come up. You can't just delete your browser history and say I was never on that website like that gig is just over and I don't know I don't know what I'm blabbering about but I hope that you guys can always feel free to come to me and address concerns or ask me questions or um, you know give me ideas and actually feel like you guys have a voice like I'm building this platform for me and my subscribers and I've heard that from every youtuber that I've ever watched but there's only a very few that I've actually seen stick to their word on that, where you really feel like they are doing everything they do for their subscribers. They interact with the subscribers. They take ideas from subscribers. They, 
um, you know, respect their subscribers. They're humble, they're nice, um, but they stand up for things when they need to. So I don't know, I hope that you guys get that from me. I hope that, you know, you guys kind of feel like it's an open door policy and I hope that I, you know, I wanna be relatable without trying to be relatable, if that makes sense. I, um, you know, I'm just a normal girl. I'm a normal girl who works a full-time job and is doing my best to get by and figuring out life as the day goes, as the days go on. So I don't know, I hope that you guys get that from me, but I wanted to say that about this whole villain thing because I find it very interesting, but I'm also very tired of it, if that makes sense. If you can, if you can be interested in something, but also be completely sick and tired of it, that's exactly how I feel about this villain persona on YouTube. So my face is feeling a little tingly. I'm still a little pink over here. So I'm going to remove the mask because I don't want to overdo it. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, so let me take it off with some warm water and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm going to put a little bit of my Laneige lip balm on. You guys can definitely see that, I'm sure you can see that my skin is a little pink, especially over here on my jawline. But I have to say, it doesn't feel overly sensitized and it also doesn't feel dehydrated. Like it still feels like it has a fair amount of moisture in it and I think that's because they do infuse those essential oils and it's not just you know, a microderm polish with like no emollients in it. And I really like that because a lot of times when I use a physical exfoliator, my skin is left feeling like I immediately need to throw on a pound of moisturizer. So I have to say, I really, really like that. This reminds me a lot of the Erno Laszlo Dual Phase Vitamin C Peel. The one from Erno Laszlo is, I think, $100. And the difference is, is that that one comes with a vitamin C serum, but I also don't feel like it's nearly as potent as this one from Obagi. If you guys want a vitamin C serum recommendation, this is one that I've been using for about two years. This is the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum and it has uh, ferulic acid and hyaluronic acid in it. I always buy mine at either Ulta or Whole Foods, depending on you know, if one is having a promotion or whatever, I'll just buy it from one of them. Really nice vitamin C serum. I'm not gonna use it tonight, obviously, because I just use high potency vitamin C. So I am just going to actually use some of my Cetaphil um, Daily Hydrating Lotion. This is nice, it's lightweight, but you guys can see like there's definitely some moisture left behind. I actually still need to take a shower, but at least I'll have a little bit of moisture on my skin while I finish this video. And um, yeah, so what are my final thoughts on this? I would say, ask yourself a couple of questions. Are you in need of a physical exfoliant? B, are you someone who uses vitamin C on a regular basis? If you need a really good physical exfoliator, and you use vitamin C on a normal basis already and your skin plays well with it and you don't have any issues and you are okay with spending $70 on a product that you're gonna use two to three times a week and you have issues with hyperpigmentation, acne scars, sort of like what my skin deals with on a normal basis, treat yourself to this. I like it. I like that my skin doesn't feel super tight and dehydrated and overworked and sensitive right now. I really compliment them on the formula not making me feel like the Sahara Desert afterwards. If you are someone who already has a good phys physical exfoliator in your skincare routine and you are someone who hasn't used high potency vitamin C, I would say stick with your 
current exfoliator and introduce a vitamin C serum like the Mad Hippie. I think this is around $30 depending on where you buy it. So I'm sure most of you guys probably fall into one of those two categories. So depending on which category you fall into, then I would say make your decision from there. If you fall into the second category and you already have a good physical exfoliator and you are either just starting with vitamin C or a very low strength vitamin C, then I would say use up what you have and when you are ready to move up, then look at more reviews on this. Don't just take my word for it. Go on to Derm Store, go on to Skin Store, go on to YouTube, you know, wherever and pull reviews and decide if it's something that you wanna try. But I like it, I'm happy that I have it. And I will continue using this two to three times a week and either update you guys in, if I ever do a favorites video, it might be in that, or um, you know, I might do an updated skincare routine video. A couple of you guys have asked me about that. You guys will hear about it in the future, but for now, I'm going to put text on the screen telling you guys how my skin felt in the morning once this has sort of had a chance to play with my other skincare products and settle overnight. I will give kind of like final, final thoughts. If I wake up with a rash, then y'all will know to avoid it. So, uh, which I don't think I will, but Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. I love doing these little skincare chats videos. I think that they're not only helpful, but I can also just kind of blather about whatever it is that's on my mind. Hopefully you guys like them as well. If you did like the video, please leave me a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.